Hey everybody, so that new live-action Jigen Dice Game movie just came out on Prime Video and, uh, well, I figured I'd give it a watch and give you my first impressions, as I want to do with New Loop on related media. Because the hype around this movie has been kind of serious, actually. Like, I've, I've seen a lot of people really excited for this movie since it was first announced, and all the trailers revealing more details. It seemed like it was going to be a really fun time. And now having seen it, I don't know if it's what we were really expecting or what we thought it was going to be like, but, well, I mean, this video's here for me to just tell you what I think. Off the cuff, I don't really have a script in front of me, just a couple of notes. There will be some minor spoilers. I'm not going to really, like, talk about the ending or anything like that, but I probably will talk about some plot details. It will obviously be screenshots on screen that might ruin something for some of you. So if you haven't seen the movie yet and you want to, I'd recommend you do so before watching this video. Uh, if you don't care about that, if you just want to hear me ramble on, uh, let's talk about that. This new live-action Jigen Daisuke film, uh, starring the same actor as the 2014 live-action film. But from what I understand, the uh, films are not related to each other. You can watch this one without having seen that one. And I know that because I still have not seen the 2014 live-action movie. I know a couple of people have asked me about that. Um, still have not seen that one, probably won't for a little while, but you don't need to watch that before you watch this one. This is completely standalone. So let's get one thing straight right now. This is not a loop on the third movie. And I know what you're about to say. Of course it's not a loop on the third movie, it's about Jigen. I mean that if you love the style of the franchise and you don't want anything else from it, this is not going to be up your alley. You know, it goes beyond this movie having very few Lupin staples outside of Jigen and his associated elements. Like, yes, it has the character, it has his gun, he has his hat, he has his beard. That's kind of where it ends. None of the other major characters carry over here, so it has to rely on Jigen's character, this, this idea of Jigen Daisuke, to get you invested in the first place. Because beyond that, this has nothing to do with the series. Which is not inherently a bad thing, but if you were looking for something to flesh out this side of the Loop on the Third franchise, this movie does not do that. It is a completely standalone thing. And it is also immediately darker and brooding, sending you right into a part of Japan that's filled with outcasts, the less fortunate. And Jigen's not necessarily outmatched in this kind of environment, uh, but in a lot of ways he is out of his element. Uh, you know, he's too far in the game to relate to the more rash and violent and inexperienced street thugs. Now, maybe it's the live action aesthetic and maybe it's the direction they went with this story, but this feels like the darkest and most explicit loop on media to date, more along the lines of something like Old Boy or Monster, because it's darker in a different way than the manga or Woman Called Fujiko Mine or even Jigen's Gravestone, which all had plenty of violence, plenty of nudity, but it is all shown in a but it is all shown in a very cool and stylized manner. And in this film, it is very grimy, very unsexy, very down to earth. And it should be said there are a lot of mature themes in this one. Sexual violence, kidnapped children, drug wars, abortions, torture, medical experimentation on humans, child abuse. This is far more disturbing than anything the Lupin series has produced so far. And, you know, it presents those themes in a very naturally terrifying way, like an R-rated police procedural almost. So because of that, it's definitely not advised that you watch this if you are at all squeamish about realistic depictions of violence or heavier themes like that. Now, it doesn't go extremely deep into these issues, mind you. It's not like a psychological thriller examining these, examining why these characters would do these things. And, and realistically, there isn't much that you wouldn't experience in any other hard-boiled action drama film, like Drive or Only God Forgive, something like that. But it does take itself extremely seriously, which might be for the best, uh, given its subject matter, but it also means that this is a very odd duck among the rest of the Lupin franchise. But I will say, if you are just here to see Jigen Daisuke doing Jigen Daisuke things, I think this movie delivers. This Jigen feels like an older Jigen, someone who has been on this path for so long that when things start to come undone, when, you know, things don't start to go his way, he can't help but be annoyed by it all. But he's still going to, you know, put on his hat, pick up his gun, and do what he does best. And I have to give props to Tetsuji Tamayama, who not only embodies this character and his stoic, you know, reserved mannerisms, but he gets the physical characterizations down pat. 
He walks and talks like the Jigen we all know and love. And hell, he even eats like Jigen. <laughs> And I also want to give a shout out to the costume designers and the makeup artists, because they translated Jigen's look from the anime pretty flawlessly. Details like the beard and his hat, I mean, they're not really like cartoonishly proportioned. Like you've definitely seen Jigen's hat and his beard get animated in pretty wild ways. You obviously can't do that in live action, but the thing is, it's still recognizable as the Jigen face but it feels realistic, like someone could manufacture and keep up this facial hair and wear that kind of hat the way that Jigen does. Now, I'm not quite sure what to feel about how they handled Oto's character. I mean, you definitely feel for her situation, but I mean, without going into spoiler territory, I do think they went overboard with trying to give her a tragic backstory and tragic character arc. It, it's really hard to do a character like this, again, I'm trying to avoid spoilers, uh, but trying to do a character like this without really delving into the psychology of these kinds of issues, because uh, otherwise it ends up feeling exploitative. And I don't think this movie goes that far, but she does definitely feel like a plot object, and that sucks, especially because I don't really buy the bond that she forms with Jigen. I don't think that these two play off each other that well, unfortunately. I like the old gunsmith woman, uh, Chiharu. Uh, she's a nice counterpoint to Jigen. You know, there's not too many badass old people as the tritagonist in the Lupin series, so I'm really glad that she got this major role. And then by the end of it, she basically becomes Jigen's mom, which I think is pretty great. There is also a fairly memorable villain in Adele, this badass drug lord who's in a wheelchair, but rises above her disability very quickly, which I think is pretty cool. It's a little implausible with the physical actions, but it's nice to see that she's taking charge. You know, she's almost a reflection of Jigen in some ways. The same unflappable and dedicated demeanor, but, uh, you know, pure evil. <laughs> this movie does kind of meander a bit, especially in the beginning. There's not a ton of action in this movie, at least not until the very end. Uh, until that part, it's mostly a mystery with a little bit of thriller thrown in. Tons of character stuff, not too much in the way of real plot. But when the action does hit, when this movie does have an action scene, it is really well done. The fight choreography is excellent. And you know, despite how dark and mature this movie gets, sometimes it can be pretty silly. I mean, this is literally a story about a crime lord weaponizing children's trauma to create anti-aging, psychoactive drugs. It's kind of ridiculous. And it's not in that like funny, like haha loop on ridiculous kind of way, but more in the why is this super gritty and down to earth detective neo noir thriller story going all Cronenberg dead ringers on us all of a sudden. <laughs> Still, I, I think this movie is a solid Daisuke Jigen story that goes far harder than it had any right to, and for the most part succeeds at what it wants to do. It is definitely not for the faint of heart, as I said, and anyone who is only interested in the, the wacky fun side of Loop on the Third is not going to find much to enjoy here. But if you are looking for a neo-noir crime drama that goes in a lot of messed up trajectories, uh, while not going super far into them, uh, and that also happens to feature Daisuke Jigen as a main character, uh, well, you were looking for something very specific. But this movie is for you. And also, the fact that it's not connected to the Lupin series in any way, besides the main character, you can go into this one even with minimal Lupin the Third knowledge, and you'll understand it perfectly. I think Jigen fans will probably be pleased with this. I do think it does our favorite gunman justice, yet I can also see how some would think it's way too dark and edgy for its own good. And some part of me does think that this might actually be more enjoyable if you have no knowledge of the franchise whatsoever. Like if you just wanted a simple little foreign action piece, because on that front, it's pretty great. But as for exploring Jigen's character any further than the basics, it's lacking. That said, if you do want to check out this movie for yourself, it is available to stream on Amazon Prime in quite a few regions. So if you have a Prime subscription and it's available in your country, I'd recommend checking it out. Just go into it with the right mindset and I think you'll get something out of it. It might not be 100% what I was expecting, but it is pretty solid, and it's worth a watch if you're at all curious. And if you were wondering, yes, this movie will get a full-on retrospective video once we're caught up with everything else. Uh, obviously, that's going to take quite a bit of time to get to, but I do want to look at this movie in hindsight once we get to that point. But yeah, my initial reactions, 
this movie is good. And that's about all you can hope for, especially because the other Lupin movie released this year, uh, well, while I liked it, I think more than other people did, definitely was not for everybody. Although to be fair, this one isn't going to be for everybody either. This is going to be a very contentious year of Lupin releases, I'm sure. And with that said, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, let me know what you thought of this movie if you watched it down below in the comments. And why not leave a like and subscribe to this channel while you're here. I got a bunch more Lupin content on the way. Hope you all have a good night, and I'll see you all later.